We're at TV Line's Comic-Con suite, Paget Brewster from Criminal Minds, welcome. Thank you. And for Batman and Harley Quinn, the movie. Yes. That's what you're doing here at Comic-Con. That's why I'm that. here. I'm at Comic-Con to promote. I did the voice of Poison Ivy, Poison Ivy. Yep. for the first time. How was that experience? It was great. And I love the, I, the movies outstanding and exciting and just written really well and Bruce Tim animated it and he's brilliant so yeah. it looks beautiful and Melissa Rauch plays Harley Quinn who oh, I love Melissa and Melissa. Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn are you know these best friends but they're at odds in this one Poison Ivy wants to destroy humanity and Harley Quinn doesn't want to die so Batman enlists Harley Quinn to help him track down Poison Ivy and stop her. So I want to talk about Criminal Minds a little bit. It mm -hmm. seems like there's never a dull moment with the cast. It's like there's always <laughs> a shake-up happening. <laughs> How do you guys manage to just sort of stay focused on the work and not so much on every, you know, some of the, the stuff that swirls around the show and the cast changes and whatnot? We care about each other a lot. It's always hard when someone is gone, whether by choice or not by their choice. But it's the same as any job. You know, f over a decade, people come and go. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, but you roll with it. And now in this incarnation, a bunch of people have been there since day one. You know, Joe joined later, I joined later, then I left, and now we've got Adam Rodriguez, and Daniel Henney just joined, and AJ, Kirsten, Goobler, me and Joe have the longest amount of time working together. It's, it always remains, we're friends, but you can't not miss the people who are gone. Um, I don't know quite how to explain it. It's odd. Mm -hmm. I mean, you must have experienced this at work with people who leave and go on somewhere else. That's or... why I don't get attached to the people I work with. <laughs> Well, we're, we're not as mercenary as you, unfortunately. We're, we're all very attached and kind of corny, and we really care about each other. And so yeah. it, it, it definitely makes it a great place to work, to, to really feel like it's a family, which includes really hating each other sometimes, mm -hmm. like really being annoyed with each other. That's, let's be honest, that's what family is. Mm -hmm. It was about a year ago when you decided to make your, your sort of temporary return permanent or full-time. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about sort of the pros and cons of that decision for you. The con was the situation in which it happened, which was uh, Thomas Gibson no longer being with the show. Yeah. That was unfortunate. It's hard to recognize my good fortune in being asked to stay permanently at the loss of Thomas. Uh, but the pros, and there are many, are having left the show and I got to do all these other shows I wanted to do and comedy and wacky things and it was four years, it was great. I was just gonna come back and guest star, but in those four years, still the majority of people coming up to me in the world are saying, why did you leave? And they're mad or they're hurt. Mm -hmm. And I love everyone there and we're friends and we were still hanging out all the time, so I thought, what am I, why don't I go back? It would be kind of crazy not to. Mm. This is wonderful. I got to suss out Adam Rodriguez, and he was great. So then they brought Damon in, and now Damon's not with us. I mean, it's a, it's a wacky place. You know the history. <laughs> you know everything that happened. It's pretty wackadoodle. But yeah. I'm really happy to be back and, and really fortunate. I, I just feel really lucky that Prentice actually didn't die when she got the table leg uh, in her spine. Well, speaking of which, that finale was pretty nuts. Like eight lives hanging in the balance. <laughs> what can you tease about who walks away from the, the car catastrophe? Well, I mean, I think it's... Pretty obvious. Pretty clear, who, which is not funny because he's such a great guy, and yeah. it's not a decision made within our group. I mean, it's a it's a decision made by the people who make those decisions, and you know they fired me once, and it's just you know it's it it's business. Business. It's not all art, yeah. or you know we wouldn't have the budget for really nice catering and trucks and cranes. So you know we all understand it can be a tough business. So what's on your wish list for Emily in season 13? Just for the writers to keep writing really great stuff. I really, I don't, they, they always ask, is there anything you want to do? And uh, I, I just say whatever, what, I can't write what they write. They, I just do whatever they tell me to do. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I'd prefer not to shoot at Disney Ranch until 5 a.m. in the rain, but I don't know how to ask them to make sure I'm not written into those scenes. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I think love. you just did. I think you, you just think asked so? them. Should I? You just asked them. 
<laughs> They'll see this. <laughs> it's tough. Those nights are tough. We just yeah. did one yesterday, or yeah, Thursday. No, w- Wednesday we shot from 12.30 in the afternoon downtown Los Angeles overnight, and we finished at 4.45 Thursday morning. So it's just long. Those are long. Those are long hours. You shot the first episode. You're back. With we the first just one. finished the yeah. first episode. The second episode started shooting today. Okay. What can you tease about the Reed situation? Fans are all in the tizzy about his car- incarceration and everything. He's you- back. Mm-hmm. Reed's back with the team. He was found innocent. Um, but the first episode, we are in a bit of a pickle with Scratch, still, who rammed a truck into our SUVs. So we find out what happened immediately after that crash. But Reed's with us. He's back. (laughs) A literal pickle? (laughs) In a pickle! You're in season 13. You know what? We've got to stretch the boundaries a little bit. (laughs) I'm sure we will. I just, I realized that there have now been 254 episodes of Criminal Minds or something. Maybe more, three, I don't even know. And those writers have had to come up with ways for a serial killer to kill victims that we would have already arrested... 10, 20 times over how many serial killers actually are operating in the U.S. at any given time. There just aren't that many. Right. But we, they have to fabricate them. And I realized the other night there was one serial killer played by Brad Henke who was, who was melting women down to make artisanal candles out of their body fat. Like, it's kind of hilarious. And then the pickle thing all of a sudden isn't so far-fetched. That's what I'm saying. You know what? I, I, I don't know if pickling... There must have been some pickling episode. Pitch it. Do they have to pay you? Give me you? credit. <laughs> yeah, and we have it on tape. Created so this by Michael Ozio. Trademark. The pickle episode. 